If Roman Abramovich's 2003 purchase of Chelsea FC introduced English football to a new generation of billionaires, the 2008 purchase of Manchester City by Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan introduced the game to its first family of trillionaires. The purchase by Mansour's Abu Dhabi United Group from previous owner Taksin Shinawatra was, to be charitable, something of a circus. Taksin, who had just had his assets frozen after being removed from power in Thailand by a military coup, was desperate to sell, and there was one man willing to buy and buy quickly. Although there was initially some confusion as to who that was, the face of the deal was Suleiman Al Fahim, a brash young Emirati real estate developer who played the Donald Trump character on a local version of The Apprentice. His catchphrase wasn't "You're fired," but "Impress me." Many assumed he was the new owner, and few were indeed very impressed. He boasted that City would sign all of the best players in the world, including Cristiano Ronaldo, and said, "I always feel like I'm kind of a bulldozer." A fully insured bulldozer. If nobody likes it, it starts moving. Even if there are cars in the way, it has to crush the cars and move. I can't stop. If I have an idea, I have to do it. It was quickly made clear that he was merely a broker for the deal, and he was removed shortly after the purchase. He was replaced by the bookish Emirati Khaldun Al Mubarak, who is today the chairman. Al Fahim would later emerge as one of a slew of new owners at Portsmouth that would eventually bring the club close to extinction. His 42-day-long tenure of Pompey was described by the Guardian as not only the shortest but surely the most ill-fated tenure in Premier League history. But at Manchester City in 2008, an orgy of transfer spending had begun. Within hours of completing the takeover, Brazilian international Rubinho was signed for £32 million. Just hours before the transfer deadline was to shut, more was, of course, to follow. Well over one billion pound was spent on transfers before this summer's transfer window. In 2011, and with UEFA beginning to implement its financial fair play rules, instigated in part because of the spend-happy regimes of Abramovich and Sheikh Mansour, City made the largest single-season loss in the history of English football, with 197 million pounds. But little was known about Sheikh Mansour, other than he was a senior royal from the United Arab Emirates. He's never given an interview in the UK, and he's only attended one Manchester City home game in nine years. Even less was known about his motives. In the statement he released when buying the club, he said, "In cold business terms, Premiership football is one of the best entertainment products in the world, and we see this as a sound business investment." But that made little sense given the relatively small figures involved in the football business. After all, according to the Financial Times, he made a 1.46 billion pound profit through the International Petroleum Investment Company in a matter of months after investing two billion pounds to help bail out Barclays Bank during the 2008 financial crisis. What we do know is that Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan is one of the most powerful and influential figures of the ruling Abu Dhabi royal family, if not the whole Middle East. Abu Dhabi is the largest and richest emirate of the United Arab Emirates, a federation of seven royal families, which was formed in 1971 by Mansour's father, Sheikh Zayed. Abu Dhabi holds most of the oil and therefore most of the power. According to the OPEC, the UAE oil reserves stand at close to 100 billion barrels. Well over 90% is found in Abu Dhabi. Mansour is one of the Bani Fatima, the six sons that Sheikh Zayed fathered with his favorite wife. These six hold an elevated position in Emirati society. His brother is Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the UAE Crown Prince, who controls the military and the internal security apparatus. Little is known of his early life, but a 2006 U.S. State Department cable released by WikiLeaks gave some biographical information when he came onto their radar after being promoted to the UAE cabinet. He is deputy chairman of the Sheikh Zayed Charitable Foundation and chairman of the International Petroleum Investment Corporation. Mansour was an English student at Santa Barbara Community College in 1989. He speaks English well, but his academic record was poor. He was appointed to key positions of state in his early 30s. In 2004, he was appointed Minister of Presidential Affairs of the United Arab Emirates, an important position that, as the U.S. intelligence community noted at the time, effectively made him the gatekeeper to the then ailing President Sheikh Zayed. In 2009, he was appointed a Deputy Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. 
He also held strategically important roles in the business world and was appointed chairman of the IPPC, one of the largest sovereign wealth funds of the UAE. Back then, the UAE presented itself as an open-minded, liberal, reformist presence in a troubled region, a safe place to do business and holiday. But the truth was, and is, very different. The UAE has virtually zero democracy, repressive freedom of speech laws, and uses the kafala system of sponsorship for its migrant population. 90% of the UAE's population are migrants, the vast majority poorly paid construction workers, drivers and maids from India, Pakistan and Bangladesh who are paid a pittance and live in miserable conditions. Whilst Qatar and the 2022 World Cup has drawn a long overdue focus on the treatment of migrant workers in the Middle East, few realise that for many activists and human rights organisations the problem is bigger and worse in the UAE. Workers are effectively working in conditions of forced labour, Human Rights Watch wrote in an early report of the treatment of migrant workers. Today, Sheikh Mansour's initial purchase has morphed into something bigger. City Football Club now owns or holds significant stakes in clubs across the world. New York City FC, Melbourne City FC, Club Atletico Talk in Uruguay, 20% of Yokohama F Marinos in Japan and just under half of Spanish side Girona which they own alongside Pep Guardiola's brother. Mansour also owns Al Jazeera in the UAE, although this isn't part of the City Football Group. In 2015, the City Football Group sold a 13% stake to China Media Capital. A few months earlier, Chinese President Xi Jinping had visited Manchester City's training complex and had a selfie taken with Sergio Aguero and then Prime Minister David Cameron. For the likes of Human Rights Watch, the purchase of Manchester City, as well as City Football Group's stable of clubs, is little more than reputation laundering. Buying a club buys you a cheap advertising space to promote your brands, from airlines to tourism to construction companies. It also buys you leverage with the press, who need access to your players and your stadium, and it allows you to talk breezily about Abu Dhabi values and draw people's attention away from the fact that your record on human rights is grim and worsening said Human Rights Watch's Nicholas McGeehan. It's true that hundreds of millions of pounds have been spent on the club's academy and rebuilding parts of East Manchester, and some changes have been made to the UAE law on the issue of migrant workers, even though few have seen any meaningful change on the ground. But the question remains, can the actions of a state really be separated from one of the politicians responsible for them, even if they are a billionaire who brings glory to your club? For Ayad al-Baghdadi, an entrepreneur and activist who was born and raised in and later deported from the UAE for translating videos relating to the Arab Spring, it's impossible to separate the two. The majority of these figures could not have become independently rich if it wasn't for them being royals in an oil-rich absolute monarchy. So no, the wealth of the ruling family definitely cannot be described as private wealth. The results on the pitch and around the Etihad Stadium in Manchester have been stunning. Since Sheikh Mansour's takeover, Manchester City have won two Premier League titles and are now regulars in the UEFA Champions League. Reputation laundering, profit, ego, whatever the real reason for Sheikh Mansour to purchase Manchester City, there's no denying that he has transformed the club into one of the world's biggest. But at what cost? <laughs>